My only true regret in life is never having flown Concorde. Now in the days before heightened security, my mum, with a little cheek and charm, took me and my brother up close at the BA maintenance entrance at Heathrow, much to the shame of my father. Mind you, from that moment I was in love with Concorde. And years later, living in southwest London, twice daily I got to see and hear her flying overhead. I don't think anyone ever complained about being under the flight path of Concorde. Well, we all know they did. But fools, every one of them. But of course, like most, flying Concorde was an aspiration too far. And since her retirement, impossible. Which is why museums such as Manchester Runway Park are so special to give us mere mortals the chance to get up close and personal to the very special plane that is Concorde. And in the description below, I've posted links to all the museums you can visit and tour Concorde. Now, on the tour, and in this video, you get to board the aircraft, take a seat, get a small taste of what it was like to fly on Concorde, a visit to the flight deck, and a tour of the aircraft, from the nose, under the wings, to the four magnificent Olympus engines. And at the end of the video, though actually in the middle of the tour, we get to see the nose going through its cycle of lowering and raising. I've also added on to the end an interview I did with Mike Panister, the chief pilot of Concorde, 20 years ago for my travel magazine, Destination THM. Interesting reading then, and still today. Now, before we enter the hangar and begin the tour, I have to give a huge thank you to our guides, John and Neil, who were both magnificent and hugely generous in allowing me to capture some of the shots to share with you. It goes without saying I recommend the tour, and as you're about to see for yourself. So, let's go and have a look at Concorde. Now, the first thing you see when you enter the hangar is Concorde. And she does not let you down. Beautiful, sleek, elegant, but enough about me. Concorde looked truly breathtaking. Those lines, that power, I knew I was in the right place. The tour starts with an introduction and a few short Concorde videos, most of which I'd watched a few times on YouTube, so I've hunted them down and posted the links in the description below. After the video, it just left me to follow Neil up the steps to British Airways G-BOAC Alpha Charlie, or simply to me, Concorde. On boarding, you can see my little homage to Dennis Bonnick, and if you don't know who Dennis is, you'll find a link in the description below to his YouTube channel. A great aviation and travel enthusiast with one of the best channels on YouTube, and the channel that inspired me to start blogging, so you can blame him. Once I'd taken it in that I was actually on Concorde, the first thing that hit me was the smell. A beautiful aroma of luxury emanating from the finest leather used for the seats. Now, having always been told that the plane was very cramped, I found it surprisingly comfortable. I'm 5 foot 11 and I found the seat very comfortable. It has a 34 inch pitch compared to the 31 inches in BA's current economy and the miserly 29 you get on Ryanair. And let's remember, you're only on Concorde for just over three hours. Another feature of Concorde was the teeny tiny windows. But I guess what they lacked in size, they more than made up for with the view. One interesting feature I noticed was the overhead air vents. Quick note to all airlines, if the most exclusive passenger jet to fly had overhead air vents, you can too. And on board, Neil gave us a brief history of Concorde and a few anecdotes of the famous passengers who flew on board. Joan Collins always chose seat 1C so everyone could see her on boarding. Who would have guessed? One of the other great features of this Concorde is the working passenger display screens, welcoming you to Concorde and showing the max speed and altitude that, as a passenger jet, only Concorde reached. Now, our visit to the flight deck, my highlight, was like Noah's Ark, visited two by two, which meant everyone got to experience not just the joy of sitting on the jump seat, but the excellent guide of the flight deck by John. So let me show you that, and if I sound like an overexcited giddy schoolboy, that's simply because I was. Wow. Special, special. 
Maybe I'm special. <laughs> don't worry, I won't put your face on anything. Can I ah, it's okay, it's all right. I've got a mask on, so you don't know who I am anyway. So no, 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 no trouble on that one. Any, any Do I sit down? Yeah, of course you are. You're not going to catch COVID through your buttocks. Um, so yeah, anyway, welcome to Concord Slide Deck. Modern aircraft is what's called a glass cockpit. Concord, good old fashioned, and lovely little downside. That's, that's the difference. Okay, I'll, I'll just keep talking. I'm going to stop filming in two seconds. Okay. You keep talking, right? Two sets of instruments, the two pilots, nothing on there. Bottom of the middle column there is engine instruments. Down the bottom on, you, you need to Concord. You've got the, um, that tells you the pilot what the uh, secondary nozzle set to the back of the engines. Down here, keypads of initial navigation, throttles, little white switches so the flames in the exhaust, there the afterburners, reheat switches. You need to conquer as far as commercial aircraft are concerned. She needs to get off the ground, she needs to go supersonic, she doesn't need to stay supersonic. That's the difference there. Working upwards here, we've got the autopilots, full cat 3 autopilots. Further forwards, there's two windscreens, one here and one in front. This windscreen's at that angle down coming there. The second one, the visor, is setting them up for supersonic flight. Concord actually slows down. Tilts back much more normal aeroplane, very angry attack, panic on so the nose came down. And this is the control that did it. First setting the visor slides in the nose, then five and twelve and a half degrees. And that's the switch I'll be using in a bit, in about ten feet, in about a quarter of an hour or so to get the, the nose. And away. literally that switch is still wired up. It's the original it's the, the original switch. The date on the back is nineteen seventy six. We had a fault on it, so it's been out and replaced by a spare one that's sold down in Bristol, which had 1974 on the back. Well, that is the original switch uh, put in in 1970. It was put in in 1976, so it's not the original one, because it's aircraft first blue 75. Um, but yeah. Up here is the master warning system. If one of those lights goes off, there's a problem somewhere. And um, there's a checklist for every error, error, every error scenario. There's a checklist. There's 500 different checklists. This guy here, the flight engineer, has to know them all by heart. That's the big thing there. He's the busy man in flight. The pilots, in simple terms, the pilots have lots of dials. This guy here has got more, and they've all got switches and controls. He's going to use almost every. He's going to use every one of them on every flight, besides some emergency stuff. The big job he's doing is actually moving fuel around to trim the airplane. Concord hasn't got trim tabs on the elevators. It's got other bonds, but they haven't got trim tabs. So to move the balance of the aircraft backwards and forwards, the flight engineer will move to ten tons of fuel from the front to the back. That's, that's a to deplane and start our tour of the exterior of Concord. Now, we all talk about the design of Concord and the power of the engines, but to me Concord has another defining image. Just like strawberries and cream, champagne and Concord go together as a perfect pair. And this is when we stopped for a glass of champagne on our tour before we saw the cycling of the nose. As you can see throughout the video, Neil is a great informative tour guide. And I've been lucky enough to have great guides throughout my travels. However, none that carried a bottle of champagne throughout the tour, topping us up as we explored. Now, they can't make the plane fly, but they do their damn best to give you the closest Concorde experience possible. Uh, the Sunday's computer very big and very heavy, and that's where they decided to house those computers. And in fact, if you recall walking to the flight, I can see John, you'll note, remember you walked through a slight tunnel, and the computers are outside that tunnel. So the nose gear had to be much further back. Now that was interesting for the pilots because when they were learning how to taxi Concorde, they had to take the distance of the nose wheel from the flight deck into account because if they turned too early or too late, the aeroplane could end up on the grass, which is the last place you'd want to be when you're uh, taxiing Concorde and you lose a lot of face and probably get into a lot of trouble as well. So that's one of the quirks that Concorde has. You've seen the nose that John's demonstrated to you, so five and a half degrees for taxi, uh, 12 and a half degrees. Uh, the exterior tour is something even the most glamorous of passengers would not have found possible. Getting up this close and personal to the aircraft, touching distance of the undercarriage, walking underneath those amazing delta wings from tip to the tail to the powerful Olympus engines. It really was something very special. Now, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Not to forget with the cycling of the nose coming in a moment, and the short taste of my tour. If so, please do give the video a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more of my videos from my travels, do consider subscribing. It is free, of course, and if you ring the bell, YouTube will notify you when I publish a new video. Before I show you that famous nose in all its glory, a few details of the tour. This was the Platinum Tour, which lasted just under two hours. 
if you've time constraints there are other tours available with all the park has to offer i do think it's a perfect day out with great plane spotting to experience and with the nimrod trident dc-10 and avro rjx four other great aircraft to explore the platinum tour was 38 pounds and included all and a bit more of what you see in the video not forgetting the champagne which was excellent and very generously poured now for the waltz of the nose cycle before this commenced john very kindly showed me the hydraulic pump system used to power the nose conveniently located opposite another essential piece of equipment on the aircraft thank you very much for watching and happy travels